Ukrainian forces have used Himar's rocket systems to halt Russian repairs to a key supply bridge in occupied Kherson as they continue to press on the southern front line. Online footage shows a fiery explosion on Antonovsky Bridge after at least 15 people were injured as a result of the broad daylight shelling on Monday, Russian news agency TASS said. At around 1 p.m. on August 22, in order to disrupt the work to restore the roadway, Ukrainian troops attacked from the American MR's rocket systems at the site of repair work on the Antonovsky Bridge, a local official was quoted as saying. The bridge has come under fire at least eight times since July 19. It is the only road crossing that connects the city of Kherson with the wider region on the eastern side of the Dnieper River. Russian forces have installed a ferry crossing across the river after traffic on the bridge was blocked for repairs on July 27, when shelling damage slashed its 100-ton carrying capacity to five. An anti-Putin Russian militant group was behind the car bomb assassination of Darya Dagaina, a dissident former Russian politician has claimed Ilya Ponomaryov said a little-known group called the National Republican Army was responsible for the killing of the daughter of the hardline nationalist Alexander Dugin on the outskirts of Moscow on Saturday. The Ukraine-based Kremlin critic read out a manifesto which he said the group had sent him on Sunday evening. On air on an online TV station he runs from Kiev aimed at challenging the Kremlin's narrative of the war, he said the group was committed to overthrowing Putin and building a new Russia. Such statements are illegal inside Russia and those who make them face long jail terms. Ponomaryov left Russia after being the only member of the Russia's lower house of parliament to vote against the annexation of Ukraine's Crimea region in 2014. His unverified claims have added to a long list of possible theories about who killed Dagaina and why. Some Russian opposition activists have speculated that the murder may have been orchestrated by forces inside Russia keen to discourage ultranationalists like her father from criticizing the Kremlin for being too soft on Ukraine. FSB intelligence agency claims that the killing was the work of Ukrainian special forces have been met with skepticism and denied by Kiev. Russian forces used torture to force staff at the Zaporizhia nuclear plant to operate the facility, the head of Ukraine's nuclear power industry has told Sky News. Petro Koten said, they captured about 1,100 personnel from the site and they kept them in their facilities, the captured facilities and police facilities in the nearby town of Innerhodar. One person was killed, another person was heavily wounded. They're trying to push on them to accept the Russian world. All kinds of psychological pushes on them. Mr. Coden, who used to be the head of the Zaporizhia plant itself, hopes independent international inspectors will be able to visit Europe's largest power plant in the next 10 days, amid fears shelling in the area could lead to a nuclear disaster from a radiation leak. Everything depends on the weather conditions and the wind. You cannot stop it. Any country which is around Ukraine is under this threat, he said. We need to release the plant from any presence of militaries on it. If we do that, if we succeed with that, everything will go back to the normal conditions of the Zaporizhia power plant and we will be sleeping with the whole world completely safe. Biden has faced growing pressure from the families of hostages and detainees, most recently in the case of WNBA star Brittany Griner, who has been detained in Russia since February and is on trial on drug charges, deteriorating relations between the United States and Russia over Moscow's invasion of Ukraine highlight his detention and wider problems.
The sanctions authorities included in this order allow the United States to impose financial and travel sanctions on those responsible for unfairly detaining U.S. citizens, whether the captors are terrorist networks or state actors, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said in a statement. A statement. The order directs government agencies to work more closely with the families of detainees and share information and possibly intelligence, U.S. officials said.